Peter. Setting. That is one plate. Hey, Chris. Put That's your nothing. motherfucking head back down, you goddamn bum! Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Chris, and this is Regular Guy Training. So, um, I figured I'd put this video out. You guys read the title and that kind of stuff. And the first thing that you would probably think initially is, well, shit, your videos, your reviews take forever anyway. You know, why would this be any real different thing that you do? Uh, well, first thing is first, um, this guy right here, I got this uh, in a trade. Uh, I traded a rifle um, for this, about eight magazines and 2,000 rounds. Now, in the amount of time that I've had it, I put a bunch of rounds on it and that kind of stuff. And ordinarily, it would be just fine for like an initial review and that kind of thing uh, before we do a long-term review on it. And because there's about 6,000 rounds through it at the moment. Um actually about I say that but it's a tick over um, but here's the thing right what the review itself is probably going like the video is probably going to be rather long and again I, I'm certain that you guys are sitting there saying okay no no fucking shit of what else is new well uh, reason why I say that is because this is uh, I'm gonna end up getting some work done to this gun right um, this guy right here uh, in its current format is, you know, I, I like it in its current format. I did some stippling to it. Um, I repainted the irons and that kind of stuff. Blacked this out. Put like an, uh, like an aggressive red-orange up front. But I decided that I was going to take the time, spend the money on um, essentially making this a pistol that I can go as fast as possible with. And what I mean by that is I'm going to end up going to primary machine and... I'm going to get some slide cut work done, uh, get that set for uh, the Holosun pistol uh, optic that's out, like their latest one. Uh, the reason why I'm choosing the Holosun optic is because, well, um, I like the idea of the circle dot reticle, right? I've seen them mounted on pistols and that kind of stuff before, and I really like the idea of having a two-minute rather precise dot if I need to make a precise shot and a donut of death. Um, if I have to shoot stuff up close and still be within a t an acceptable target zone. So, you know, having seen it mounted to pistols and that kind of stuff before, I like that idea. Um, track record all on them also seems to be pretty good as far as their durability and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to sit here and pretend for one second like I haven't seen a couple of videos um, showing exactly how ridiculous they are, even with like really battered to shit gra glass and you know optic housing and that kind of stuff because yeah i saw the sage dynamics video too um so 
what I plan to do is I, I plan to go to a uh, primary machine. Um, basically getting rid of this rear sight, um, pulling the optic as far back to the rear as possible and putting a set of uh, Glock suppressor height rears with a suppressor height uh, P10C uh, front sight in there. Um, basically so I can push the glass away from the e-port as much as possible, get it cleared and that kind of stuff. Uh, so that it, so that more or less if I have like weak ejection from like lighter recoiling, um, like pistol ammunition from reloads or like some Tula, which isn't the hottest stuff ever, and it's the majority of what I shoot. Um, you know, I don't have to deal with ejection issues with that stuff bouncing off the optic and that kind of thing. So there's that. But the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to put more money into the pistol by going to Parker Mountain. Um, and I'm going to get their threaded barrel and compensator for it as well. You know, like for real, this is going to be like a go fast pistol, you know, and I'm, and I'm going to talk about what it was like to carry it and that kind of stuff <clears throat> because I plan to keep a light on it and, you know, more or less have like a, a image concept version of like a Roland special, you know, because you got the stippling, the threaded barrel, the comp and the optic and suppressor height sights, that whole that whole shebang coming together. So, I plan on doing all that stuff, and that's going to take a little bit. Um, you know, and it, it's not going to be a terribly long amount of time to get all of that together, mounted to the pistol and that kind of thing. But you guys will see snippets of stuff as it gets done here and there. Like, you'll know when the slide work is done, because I'll be doing some shooting with it. And you know when I get the threaded of barrel and comp, and then a couple of thousand rounds later, you'll more than likely have a review on the pistol. Because at that point, it'll probably have been pretty deep in, in uh, what I would normally consider a normal reviewing cycle. Like 6,000 rounds is usually when I'm like, all right, let's get, let's, get some, uh, let's get some intro footage of this stuff, throw in some doom music, clip some stuff together, and, you know, let's actually review the whole thing. But I'm going to delay that mostly because, you know, I want all of that stuff done and I can talk about how it was like, what it was like in its stock configuration after I got the slide work done to it, after I got the comp mounted to it, and it's going to be a staged review and that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it's mostly like a multi-parter review on it because um, the first part of that review is likely to be on the stock pistol, right? And then the second part of it is, well, what happens if you try to roll in special a P10C? See what I mean? So, there's all that. Um, I mean, if you guys want a review of the stock pistol first and then after the modifications are done and that kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section below. Um, I'm still kind of uh, feeding off of what I should do um, with this review process. And by all means, let your opinions be known in the comment section below and that kind of thing. Aside of that, though, um, that's the direction that I'm leaning toward right now. Now, if I get enough people saying, hey, review the stock pistol first, okay, then I'll, I'll change up my thought process and that kind of thing. But if there's enough of you that are just kind of like, no, nah, dude, finish it and then finish what you intend to do with it and then review it, and then, you know, that, that'll be what, it's, what it is from there. A uh, couple other updates and that kind of thing. Um, I have a Barrett Rec 7, a DI. Uh, rifle that I'm reviewing. Um, Dimitri from uh, who's worked on the ACSS reticle and that kind of, and a, a long list of other reticles um, sent me a bunch of stuff. Uh, he sent me um, because he was just kind of like, hey, I like your stuff. Freaking, you know, freaking go ahead, you know, review, review the scopes. Let me know what you think about the reticle and that kind of stuff. So I've had. Um, an ACOG with an Aurora reticle in it for a little while now and I'm evaluating it um, and as well as the fact that I got a, uh, the, a variable power Raptor um, this is from primary arms and a Cyclops you know and he was he was really quick to be able to separate himself to where he's like hey I designed the reticles okay not the glass just so you know but I don't really give a shit like review them as you like to review them and I told him, all right, cool, because I'm not going to pull any punches. Um, but I received those. I have reviews on those three optics to do. Uh, I believe I'm going to keep them on AR-style rifles, which uh, I kind of needed to sidestep from the AKs just a little bit, not because I'm not a fan or anything, but I don't like to be, um, I don't like to be, you know, 
hey, this is the only rifle I run well. Like, I don't like to get sunk all the way into that. And, you know, I started to notice that, hey, I haven't been shooting the AR in a decent chunk of time, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in, uh, start mounting these optics to ARs and start shooting the bejesus out of them and that kind of thing. A lot of these are, a lot of these are probably going to get shot um, on top while they're riding on top of a uh, uh, the Barrett Rec 7, which I'm a decent chunk of the way through the review on that as well. So, you know, there's that, and this is just the stuff I've been working on and, and that kind of thing. Uh, the extended review for the Draco is going to get here sooner than later, really, because I shoot the shit out of that rifle, and other people do as well. Uh, the extended review for the Dan Weston Specialist in 9mm is coming also, you know. Um, so there's, I'm going to have a 1911E discussion about it because, you know, there, there are some things that have evolved with that pistol uh, between when I first reviewed it and now. And no, I didn't get slide work done to it or anything like that. It's just particular details that I'm going to cover when I do the extended review for that. Um, oh, I've been evaluating the X-Tech magazines uh, for the AK, uh, the X-Tech Tactical uh, 30 caliber AK mags for some time now. Actually, I've been evaluating them since the first generation of those magazines started to come out, uh, since before they hit the market, and I've been doing a lot of long-term testing on them, collecting tons of data, um, killed a lot of their early magazines fast, but they've evolved quite a bit too, and I have a bunch of their latest generation magazines that um, I'm beginning to tie the bow on, uh, so that review is coming, and I know this was about the, the, the title of this was about the P10C, but it kind of evolved in everything else that I've been doing because I haven't been posting as much as I have been lately, and honestly, it's, it's between the Army and running the company and that kind of stuff. I've been getting a little busy, and I've been, y'all have been hitting a back seat, and I feel kind of guilty about that because this is where I got my start, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, as far as the review side of the house is concerned. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep pushing on that. Uh, as well as the fact that um, I finally have a flagpole in Nevada. Class dates on that are coming fairly soon. Um, you know, and there's other classes that I'm getting ready to put onto the school schedule and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, uh, my California boys that have been waiting on this, waiting on figuring out when they can come out and play with us, uh, that that is a thing. Like I have a flagpole in Nevada now. I'm just do, going through the rest of the planning process on when exactly and what exactly I'm going to teach. And if you're out that way, let me know. What do you want to work on? Pistol or rifle to start? It'll be one of the two. It'll be one of the mainline classes because it it has to be profitable if I'm going to go out there that far. You know. So the classes that make me the most of my money, I might as well start off with out west. So. There you go. Those of you who have been beating me over the head about going out west, I got you. Um, oh, and last thing, uh, before I kind of button this all the way up, I still got slots open for this November uh, Rifle 1 and 2 class. It is uh, the 2nd through the 5th, right? So 2 and 3 is Rifle 1, 4 and 5 is Rifle 2. That's on the website as well. All of this stuff is in a link in the description below. Uh, I got one of my soldiers that's coming out, you know, throwing money at him and that kind of thing. Um, he's going to be shooting um, a Zestava, uh, the Z-Pap, right? Uh, it's one of their short. It's one of their short guns. Uh, so those of you that through that decide that you were going to uh, help us out with get it with rate with uh, raising Pap money, and this was put out on like Facebook forever ago. But those of you that decide that we're going to help us out with that, uh, yeah, it we it yielded results, a whole bunch of ammo, and we're getting ready to go. Uh, train up a soldier also in the process. So, you know, kind of killing two birds with one stone there. Um, hey, uh, for those of you who, who have been watching the channel long term and that kind of stuff or are just jumping on, uh, I apologize for, uh, again, for not uploading as much as I normally do. Again, you just get busy and that kind of thing. Uh, you guys have, are, are the entire reason why I'm running my own company and that kind of stuff to start, so I apologize for that. I'm going to rectify it by putting a lot more projects more forward um, uh, as far as my priorities go with how I'm running business and that kind of thing. So again, thanks for sticking with us. I apologize for the lesser amount of video production that's been going down as of late, but you know, still thinking about you and we're going to handle things uh, as best as possible. But 
Uh, last, last thing to note, again, if you're a school resource officer or a teacher permitted to carry a gun in a classroom, yes, we will have to verify with you. But, if, but it's been a standing thing uh, as far as us charging tuition and that kind of stuff. We will, tr we will train those people tuition-free forever, right? So again, if you're a school resource officer or a teacher permitted to, ca permitted to carry a gun in the classroom, you know, I'm all about more security uh, for the kids and that kind of stuff, and I'm not going to be the person ever that's like, pull all the guns out of people's hands. No, I, well, I would like to add competent guns to those schools, you know, because I, I have children too, so why, why wouldn't I do that? Um, so, that's all I have, guys. Remember, regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.